today we're installing an in-roof solar system. It's the first one that we've done, so we're gonna be learning all the way through and we're gonna share with you guys the whole process. We're gonna talk through why would you want an in-roof system? What are the benefits and what are the downsides? And we're gonna show you the whole process here on this real project that we're about to crack on with. So make sure you like and subscribe and let's get into it. So to give you a bit of background on this project, let me tell you a little story. The customer here has had this stables block for quite a while. The stables has had a flat roof on it. Now the flat roof was due for replacement anyway and the customer thought she would love to have solar but the main house roof is just not possible to fit solar panels on. So she came up with a cunning plan. Why not re-roof the stables block with the ideal roof to fit solar panels on. It's been about six months in planning because the customer had to get planning permission. She had to get an architect to draw the design for the new roof. She had to get a builder to come in and build the new roof. And now we're at the stage where we can finally fit the panels. But because it's a brand new roof, it's an ideal situation to put an in-roof system rather than an on-roof system, which will look absolutely magnificent. And so today the guys from Viridian are about to arrive and show us how to install this in-roof system. So this is the design drawing that we've created in Solar Edge. It's 14 panels in landscape, and these are the Viridian Clearline Fusion 405 watt panels. They're a brand new panel that Viridian have just released, and they're all black panels, so they look really smart. We've got a five kilowatt Solar Edge inverter going in and 5.67 kilowatt peak of DC. That will generate an annual estimate production of 5.3 megawatt hours. In the Solar Edge design tool we create a stringing map so that we know exactly how each panel will link into each other and we've got optimizers going in. Each panel will be optimized to get the best out of the system because there is some shading here and it is not a directly south facing roof. So we wanna get the maximum out of the system that we can. So this is the roof design and as you can see, it's not a standard mono pitched roof. The pitch on this side is different to the pitch on that side. The reason is the roof had to be designed to get the optimal angle for the panels and also have more space on this side because this is the south facing side to be able to fit as many panels as possible. So essentially this whole building roof has been designed purely around the solar to get the maximum out of the system. So this is the layout of the panels and Viridian gives us a map of exactly where each panel needs to go and all the different parts that are involved in the system to be able to fit them all in the right place. So this is Jamie from Viridian. He's come to teach us how to install the system today. How you doing? Thanks for joining us. No problem, no problem. So do you want to talk us through the process? Yeah, so what we'll do first is we'll start by opening the boxes in order. So we'll open the bottom left, which will be the yellow. We always start setting out from the bottom left. Yeah. And then it's one box per panel. So we'll use all the fixings up on that first panel before we move on to the next one. Cool. We'll get the yellow box up first, eh? Yep. Ooh. So you'll notice that these panels are quite a lot deeper than a standard solar PV panel. And they've got this membrane around the edge. It's like a rubber gasket, essentially, which will allow the whole system to be sealed in and no water will get in behind the panels. They're also fire proof, I think. So they kind of maintain the fire barrier of the roof as well. They've got very high uh, fire resistant properties or something like that and we're going to be putting these little cases around the MC4 connectors if needed as well to add extra fire protection. So there's one box per panel and they're colour coded so we've got a little colour, colour map here and it shows that the bottom left corner is the yellow box then we put the green box then we do a red box and a blue box red blue red blue all the way to the end and then orange blue right on the right hand side so it's basically just kind of solar by numbers. So we've got the center line here, we're just gonna double check that that is correct with the actual building. And if that is, and the 890 here gives us our spacing off the end for the first panel, then everything should be laid out equally so that we've got an equal space either side. Okay, so it's 20 centimeters off basically. So on this drawing, the 6120 is the measurement from the end of the panel to the center of the array. 
So that is based on the size of the panels and the gaps in between. So that is what you need to stick to, even if the roof is slightly bigger or smaller, and therefore the, the gap from the end of the panels to the end of the roof is different, doesn't matter. That is the measurement that's important to go with because that'll be 6120 from the center of the panels to the edge of the first panel and the same the other way. So you just get a center line on the roof and then you measure uh, basically to the left, 6120. That's where you put your first panel bottom left and work from there. At the minute, that's just setting up off of that button. So 130 up off of that. Yeah. And that's where the top of our panel be. Okay. So the head flashing is gonna go beyond that. Right. To sit on there. Our height for the first back, um, for our first bracket will be 130 up off of that. Yeah. That should give me enough to lift the lead and get this in, okay. this course in here. If we get the panel first, sit her on that back and lift her up, poke the cables in. 1120, right? So, oh, it's, yeah, it's not far out. Far off. So, yeah, then, yeah, if you lean her down and get the cables in through that lap. They're not very long, the um, tails on these panels, are they? Uh, cables in. Yeah, yeah, lay that down then. Okay, then what we want to do is want to square up off this button. We have to follow the button. In an ideal world, if you're slating, you yeah. get that slating course in ah. first because you can have that cut, that double course cut on Hopefully, there, your yeah. topper course. You bring that right down to there where you'll be able to get these brackets on. So they'll hook into that. Now it'll just sit into there. But because obviously they're slating after, we better give them a bit, so we'll, we'll crank it up to 130 above yeah. this button. Rather than squaring off verges or side abutments or anything like that, um, always we're, we're governed by the button. Okay. So we'll, we'll always square up off of that. Yeah. Uh, if the battening's out, that's when you want to question the roof off before you start, start the work. Within the literature, it says that it, it's, this is recommended to have a decent membrane yeah. and a decent, decent battens underneath yeah. it. They've got to be 25mm deep battens anyway, 19mm are no good. If there is a lot of undulation in the Battens, you'll struggle like mad with this system. Yep, yep, top of the button to one, yep, 130. These will hook into that groove there and then just go flat against the body and that's going to pick it up slightly. And then it's just a case of screwing that in. These are going on the same, so they're going to hook in into the same groove but on the end and they're just going to drop down onto oh, the top okay, of the, onto the, onto the, top of the button, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's the one. Right, Lovely. so then we just use these same screws on this 25, side. 25 mm screw on this. So, yeah, two types of screws. Oh, yeah, there's two types. 50, that's for the rafter, and a 4x25, that'll be used in the batten. So these Hilti impact drivers are fantastic. This is the SID 622. When you're doing stuff like this, repetitive tasks, absolutely fantastic, so powerful. Green box. Oh, no, no, not them. Not them ones. Not them ones, but it. Oh no. What? Got we know, oh, we know where sorry. Them ones are going, don't you? Yeah, they're going. Yeah, they go on the very top. I'm getting carried away. Yeah. They'll go for your very top. Right. So no matter how many panels you go up, yeah. that and the head flashing gets put to one side. Right. Okay. Cool. Is it the same screws, the 50 mil? Yep. So if you're enjoying seeing this Viridian system go in and you'd like to see a more in-depth version, we are filming a full deep dive on this system where we show every single step that goes into the installation. That's gonna be available for our channel members. So if you click the join button next to subscribe, you could get access to over 20 exclusive members only videos, as well as special perks, including a full deep dive on this system. All right, we'll get some flashings on now. If we get the window cleaner, and then I'll use a scraper. Pushing the flashings in, you're aiming above the yellow as a guide, but you still want to be able to see the black rubber above. If, if you're going above that, it's not going to seal. So you're aiming above the yellow. Yeah. Run my blade through it, just to assure they're open. The top, the very top of the gasket, any of the flashings, always start pushing one end and work your way to the other. If you go both ends, that middle will bow. That's it, onto that button, perfect. If we lay it flat on the button, that's it, and then, yep, move the gasket up. Engage one end, make sure your line down the side's true. Yeah, let's go a bit. Out there. See, so get that right tight. There we go. So 
it's going really well. We've got six panels on already and it's sort of like rinse and repeat once the first, the bottom left corner is in and the top one is in. The kits are all the same right up until the end. The last two is slightly different again because you've got that side flashing to go on. But yeah, we're doing well. It's now half past 11 and we're sort of halfway through. So in theory, we're on track to have it all, all the panels on by the end of the day. Just shows the ease of install in these situations where you've got a brand new roof all battened and felted and ready to go is, is very good. So for installers, that's a massive plus. But for customers, what are the other benefits of having an in-roof system? Well, I guess number one is it looks great. The panels are recessed into the roof. They're completely flush with the roof tiles. So you don't have any panels sticking out from the roof at all protruding. We always use all black panels anyway with solar skirt usually around, so they do look nice. But this is probably as nice as you can get in terms of looks when it comes to solar. So aesthetics are definitely one big improvement. Now in terms of cost, the panels themselves are a bit more expensive than normal panels. But because you don't have to fill the rest of the roof with roof tiles, if you're doing a new roof anyway, then it's actually probably cheaper to put in roof solar than it would be to put on roof solar on top of a load of lovely new tiles. So that's definitely something to factor in in terms of the cost. Now can you install an in roof system on an old roof? Well, you can, but there might be issues because when the roof tiles come off, you might find that the, the battens are old and rotten and worn. It needs refelting, and potentially the joist needs some repair work. So if you are going to fit an in-roof system on an old roof, you'll need to get a roofer to do a survey on the roof, and probably they'll need to strip all the tiles off the roof, refelt and batten at minimum, and maybe do some kind of structural uh, reinforcement for the roof as well. However, in terms of weight, that's the interesting thing about an in-roof system as well. Because you've not got roof tiles underneath the panels, the weight of the panels is about the same or even less than the weight of the roof tiles would be. So you're not actually adding any additional weight to the structure. And therefore, if you do have a structurally difficult roof, in-roof can be a way around getting structural engineer approval because you're not having to get approval for a lot of extra weight. So there are a lot of benefits to getting an in-roof system, but it really depends on your situation and whether you want to have extensive roof work done or not. So these are the solar edge optimizers that we're putting under each panel. These will optimize each and every panel to get the most out of them. The reason we're fitting these is because there is some shading on the roof, so we just want to get the best out of the system. It. Also, it's good for safety because this building is remote from where the inverter's going. We're gonna be running the DC cables under the ground. And what it means is that when we connect these, they only output one volt per panel until the optimize, until the inverter's actually connected. Um, so it means we can safely run all the DC cabling without having to worry. I'll finish it yeah, here where, finish the yellow ends. where the yellow ends. Right, okay. And then if you start one end, so start my end, if you can, if you yeah. tilt it so that mine is angling down a bit, that's yeah. it. it. Makes it easy for me to push in. And then once you've got your height set, now what I'd normally do is say there was six up there, I'd have all my gutter brackets on. Now you've got your height set with the bottom gutter, I'd then, you, and you know the, the laps are going to be correct then because you, you go to the end of the yellow gasket. I'd put all my gutters in dry and put all these cover flashings on all the way up. It makes life easier because then when you're turning that panel in, you've only got to reach across the panel to put that last cover flashing on, which is not too bad when it's like this because two landscape, we can both reach to the middle. When you're four, five, six in landscape or even worse in portrait, you can't get to the middle ones. So it's best to build them up as you go. My side's got slightly less flex than yours. So I start on my side and okay. normally marry the profiles up like that yeah. into this side profile, pull my wing round and tuck my wing in the right place so I know I'm in on my side. And then you want to be going over the top of that cover flashing on your side. Oh, but is it still got to go under the black rubber bit? Pardon? Yeah, still yeah, got to go yeah, under yeah. The... Oh, it's got to be in the seal. Everything's got to be yeah. in the seal, yeah. That's it, right. And then put the scraper in. In here? Yeah, so you can see the bit of black rubber above, then you know you're not going to go above it. So we're doing well. 11 panels down, three to go. And uh, this last bit is just to show you guys the flashings and the gutters in between. It's a very clever system how it all fits together and enables a completely sealed roof space so that you know rain can pour on it, debris can come down and it'll all just wash off. 
really, really nice. So this is the first part of the guttering system that goes in between the panels vertically. And it basically just catches the rain, allows it to run down to the bottom without anything leaking into the roof. Then there's some extra bits that go over the side and it just slides in. So it's very easy. It just slides in like that all the way down and then fixes in place. Go on, keep going. If he grabs that end, I've got this in, mate. Yeah. So just foam to foam on that. Bend that up ever so slight there. Don't want to bend it up too much, you know, because putting a kink in it. Bend that up ever so slight there. Foam to foam. And then just look at it. That's it. So that's it, 14 panels on in a day. I'm impressed with how speedy that was. And the result is chef's kiss, really love it. So uh, tomorrow what's gonna happen is the roof is gonna come in, they're gonna infill the slates around the edge. We'll see if we can get a time lapse of that. And then our guys are gonna be here fitting the optimizers underneath, connecting all the DC cabling back to the garage and doing some prep work for the inverter and battery storage system, which is going over the garage as well. But for today, we're done, so see you tomorrow. So the roofers are finished and I'm here to see the finished product and I must say it looks stunning. The way the panels just sit so neatly into the roof makes it look like it was built to be there, which in this case it was. And the panels being all black with that grey slate, it just looks so slick. It's been a fun install, we've enjoyed doing it and I hope you guys have enjoyed watching it. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more kind of content like this. And why not grab a cup of tea, sit back and watch another video because we've got over 600 videos that we've recorded on this channel about various different projects like this. So I hope you join the Artisan Movement and stay with us for a few more. But either way, thanks for joining and we'll see you on the next one.